you have been warned. Okay. This is what's happening. You have been warmed and you better prepare accordingly. You better seek shelter. You better stay alert. You better make sure you have enough food stocked up for survival. Y'all, this is this is serious. This is serious. And I have a video coming out later today. I'm going to do it live. Um, this is, this is getting very, very serious. Never did I think that our children would be saying, I survived world war three. That is where this is headed. World war three. Let's get into exactly what is going on now. Yes, we know it's always something. I told y'all it was going to be a busy, busy upload day. And it definitely has turned out to be, unfortunately. But fortunately for you, I am on it to bring you the news that you can use. Or if you can't use it, you can share it out with somebody who can use it. This is definitely going to have touches of preparedness in it. And I do encourage you to get into the comments and give your tips and your ideas on stockpiling food, stockpiling supplies, non-food items. And we need to, to, you know, do the three Ps. Pray, plan, and prep. So what's happening right now is the U.S. Embassy in Kiev has shut as Ukraine braces for a huge Russian revenge strike. It comes days after Ukraine used U.S. supply ATACMS missiles to strike Russian territory for the first time. And Moscow warned it would react accordingly. Um, Putin has always said that he will see um, NATO countries that help Ukraine strike them as uh, NATO being in this war and he will act accordingly. Now, a lot of people say that that's just rhetoric that he is spewing. He's been spewing this for a long time, but eventually y'all, in my opinion, he's going to act on it. So in that picture right there is Ukraine searches for drones over Kiev during a Russian drone strike. This picture right here is Ukraine is bracing for a significant revenge strike from Russia and right here, this is Putin, who has said repeatedly warning that Moscow will respond to the use of U.S. long-range missiles inside of Russia. So the embassy said it has received specific intel about a potential significant airstrike. It said, out of abundance of caution, the embassy will be closed and embassy employees are being instructed to shelter in place. And this is not just U.S. embassy that is shut down. U.K. shut down their embassy. France shut down their embassy. Because they too are helping Ukraine against Russia. So everybody is a potential in potential harm's way. In an unusual warning, the embassy told U.S. citizens to be prepared to immediately shelter in the event an air alert is announced. The U.K. government is also watching the security situation for Brits in Kiev, incredibly close, but the embassy in the capital remains open. Science Secretary Peter Kyle told Time Radio, we have very good relationships with the government in Kiev, and with the United States, we will do everything we can to keep British citizens safe. But there's just been no doubt this conflict has gone on for over 1,000 days. It was caused by the illegal, unwarranted, and unprovoked attack by Vladimir Putin. Both Spain and Greece have shut their embassies, telling citizens to take extreme security measures due to the increased risk of airstrikes throughout Ukraine. 
Vladimir has repeatedly warned that Moscow will respond to Ukraine strikes with U.S. made weapons deep into Russia. In September, he said it would mean that NATO countries are at war with Russia. And just days after the U.S. approved Ukrainian use of the far-reaching rockets, Vladimir Putin signed a new doctrine that lowers the bar for launching a nuclear strike. Almost simultaneously, Ukrainian media reported the first use of the ATACM as missiles on Russian territory. These are missiles that were given to them by the United States, y'all. You and y'all can get in the comments and let me know what y'all think about this whole situation. Ukraine's military did not comment on the use of the weapons, but took responsibility for a blaze at a weapons depot in the city of um, Karachiv, 70 miles over the border. The Kremlin claimed Ukraine had fired six ATACMS, claiming they caused no serious damage. It said it marked the crossing of the red line, though officially putting nuclear retaliation on the table again for countries that are helping. So this says the, the map shows the suspected locations of some of Russia's nuke missiles, submarines, and bombers. On Wednesday, Ukraine confirmed Russia is preparing a series of attacks. The head of Ukrainian uh, Secretary, I mean, Security Councils for countering disinformation said, let me remind you that the Russians have been stockpiling missiles for a series of attacks on Ukraine for months now. This includes KH-101 missiles, which they continue to produce, as well as calibers and ballistics. As tensions skyrocket, the Kremlin said on Wednesday that a special hotline in place to deal with crisis between Moscow and Washington was not currently being used. This hotline was created and it was created in 1963 after the Cuban Missile Crisis in 1962 to allow direct communication between the U.S. and Russian leaders with the two Cold War superpowers came close to nuclear war. Putin was left raging when U.S. President Joe Biden finally approved use of this far-reaching rocket um, by Ukraine on Sunday. His foreign minister warned that Moscow will react accordingly. After Ukraine's use of the U.S.-made missiles over the border, he described the strike as a signal that Kyiv wanted to escalate. And Russians, Russia's foreign intelligence chief, said attempts by NATO countries to help Ukraine strike deep into Russia would not go unpunished. Meanwhile, Putin puppet Dmitry um, said it meant World War III. Russia has issued countless similar threats in the past, they say, invoking fear and possible nuclear escalation in the West. So this is the U.S. embassy that has shut down ahead of the potential airstrike on Kyiv right here. This is burnt out cars, destroyed residential buildings after a Russia attack, Russian attack on Sumy in Ukraine. So the ATA CMS strike, uh, Ukraine fired at least six U.S. missiles into Russia. Hmm. <laughs> So um, Sir Keir Starmer said, Britain will not be cowed by Putin's irresponsible nuclear rhetoric at the G20 summit in Brazil. He said, this is irresponsible rhetoric coming from Russia, and that is not going to deter our support for Ukraine. So Brits are going to continue to help Ukraine. U.S. is going to continue to help Ukraine. And French um, Foreign Minister jean no Barrett also dismissed Putin's decision to lower the threshold for a nuke strike as just rhetoric. But how long will it just be rhetoric before he actually gives that order? So asked about letting Ukraine use UK-made storm shadow missiles, the UK said that they are still going to help Ukraine with these missiles. Um, he said, I've been doubling down in my clear message that we need to ensure Ukraine has what it needs for a long and needed 
whatever, to win this war against Putin. On Wednesday, the science secretary um, said, I'm not going to share details at the moment of operational matters that are on the ground in Kiev. And then they went on to say they have a good relationship with the Kiev government. Alongside long-range missiles, Biden has also agreed to give Ukraine anti-personal landmines in a bid to slow Russian troops. The U.S. defense official said Ukraine was committed um, to not using the mines in densely populated areas. So we're even offering up things that Ukraine don't even want. Hmm. Overnight, Ukraine staged major new strikes in Russia as a major war command post in Belgorod region was seen going up in flames on Wednesday morning. It was initially unclear if the command HQ was struck by a long range missile supplied by the US, UK or France. So on Sunday, Russia um, pounded Ukraine power grid with 120 missiles and 90 drones in one of the biggest airstrikes or air attacks um, of the war so far. This called caused damage to the power system and killed seven people. As winter approaches, the U.S., and y'all listen to this closely now, because this is the preparedness part of it that I want you to hear. <clears throat> In my video later, it's going to make you think. So as winter approaches, the U.S. Embassy in Kiev urged citizens to have reserves of water, food, and other essentials for the event of a possible temporary loss of electricity and water. That is important. We need to be preparing on all accounts for winter weather but we definitely need to be thinking about, you know, down the road, if this keeps escalating, if we continue to keep um, helping, how is that backlash going to hit us here in the West? So just wanted to bring you a short story. This is a lead up to the major story that I have for you later. So definitely turn your notifications on so you'll know when that video comes up and it will be alive. I thank y'all for watching. I appreciate you for being here. Um, thank you for returning to my old school cousins and to my new school cousins. Welcome in and to ones who are on the edge of maybe becoming a family member, come on in. We love on you too. Over here on Tommy Bikes Homestead, where we're going to bring you homesteading, definitely news you can use and preparedness tips and ideas on where to even begin with all of this stuff. So y'all take care and stay safe. Definitely um, have a very, very blessed week. <laughs> Love you guys, but God truly loves you more.